Okay, um, this video is in response to video number 64 that we just did on the Collins KWM-1 and it's mostly a safety related uh, video that I wanted to share with you right quick so it's going to be a very short video and the thing was yesterday when I was going through the uh, KWM-1 I showed you about taking the, the T and sniffing for RF in the radio well I just want to tell you this is not the correct way that you should do it um, the reason being is this is metallic um, a lot of voltages in that radio and if you accidentally stick this in the radio you could be killed and you know that wouldn't be a good thing um, you probably found out by now I'm always very old school this works for me but I do not suggest you doing it usually when I'm using this I'm holding it you know six or seven inches away from the, the unit I'm working on and uh, it's a little bit directional being a T but we really shouldn't be using this from a safety standpoint um, you know to look for singles in a radio that has such high voltages in it because you know we want to be safe and we don't want no one to get hurt so my suggestion is never use the T or metallic object to probe around for singles in a HF radio or anything that has high voltage in it. Um, what I should have done was reached up here and hanging from the ceiling is the proper tool to do this with. And as you can see it's just a length of coax and to show you how old it is it has a PL259 on the end instead of a BNC connector. But on this end there's a half inch loop um, with two turns of uh, number 14 gauge wire and this works real well for sniffing because you can get right on in and just about touch the circuit and you don't have to worry about shorting anything out or getting electrocuted this would uh, save your life over that T trust me um, I do need to change this out one day to a BNC but I got a um, SO239 to BNC connector I normally use with it and this just plugs right up into the uh, antenna port here on the spectrum analyzer you know it's a T you go right in there and you just use this to sniff around this way no one gets hurt so how do you make that well I'm going to show you so what we have is just a roll of wire a um, couple of sizes of heat shrink tubing a length of coax that has the solid conductor on the center and a BNC connector now my old one is half inch diameter inside and this works great for HF frequencies but I wanted one that was going a little higher so we're going to use a little bit smaller wire and I'll show you how we form our coil. I'm going to just take a bit that's a quarter inch in diameter. I'm going to come on here and I'm going to wind two turns around it. Like so. And then I'm going to just run the two wires out parallel from each other. And then we'll slide the bit out. And there is our high frequency pickup coil. So here you can see I have our coil formed and the leads cut. And I also have our coax prepared. And we're going to just solder this right in, heat shrink the center conductor, and then we'll run a piece of heat shrink completely over the whole thing. So now as you can see we have the uh, center conductor connected to the coil and there's a piece of heat shrink over it. Now we just have to attach the uh, 
shield to the other end of the core. And now we have that sorted in place and I have our heat shrink tubing over it. I'll just heat the heat shrink tubing. We'll put a BNC in on the other end and our cable will be just about finished. And there we have it. And you see this all of this to it to make a proper RF sniffing. Now like I say this one is for higher frequencies. I did not have one that was uh you know set up for higher frequencies. What I had broke many years ago and I never fixed it. But uh yeah that's all there is to it. Now I'll just demonstrate how effective uh this is I got the HF Pro and I got an old Cobra 148 here on the bench. And we're just going to use it for reference if we wanted to sniff out and say the radio came in, it doesn't work, you know, you want to just find out, you know, what's going on. You can grab the frequency counter and your probes and go in and start testing and you know if things are weak you're gonna load the circuit down and you might not be able to test. But let's just test to see if the 10240 is working. We've got the monitor set for 10.240 and we'll take our probe and just get it near the 10.240 oscillator and there it is. You can see that uh, we got a good healthy single on our spectrum analyzer and uh, this is also a little bit directional. If I turn the coil real slowly you can see that the single just about goes away. It kind of works like a near field probe. You know, it's just a crude version of it. And uh, if you look, you can actually see that there is two singles here. So half of 10.240. And we can read our 5 megahertz single real weak you know it's not very strong like the 10 240 single is so now we know we have our 5 megahertz coming out of the PLL circuit also here in the COVID 2000 we have 11.375 megahertz crystal and we simply dial that into the spectrum analyzer and we can go in and check and see that single very healthy single. So now you can use this to go through a radio not only checking for RF power but for checking uh, reference oscillators and so forth. You know we know all um, 11 megahertz oscillators running um, or 10 240 megahertz oscillators running. You can go in and check the receive mixers and, and different stuff just by dialing it into the frequency of what it's supposed to be and uh, using the uh, probe to hunt it down and safely you're not going to short nothing out now will the uh, VHF probe work on this well I'll show you as you can see it works but you're not getting a stronger single like the uh, HF probe still a good healthy single but if this circuit was weak you know it might not even register on it so you know it's always good to have two different ones one for VHF and uh, above and then you know one for HF so I just want to share that tip with you you know it's always best to be safe and to instead of doing it you know the way I showed you yesterday again you know being old school I just did what I had to do to go through the repair not thinking about the consequences of the viewers watching so you know always do it safely use uh, the proper insulated equipment you know be careful around high voltages and you know even if you did short something in the radio and it didn't hurt you then you could end up damaging something in the radio that would be unattainable so it's always good to play it safe. Anyway, so one other thing I wanted to share before I end this uh, little safety tip is, uh, you know, on YouTube, uh, 
I try my best to go through here and answer everybody or thank them or, or whatever, you know. And here lately I have been getting lots and lots and lots of responses, which is good. I'm not complaining about that. But there's been a few people, there's no one in this one that has replied, and I am unable to reply to you. I can click the reply button, type in my message and hit reply and it does not take so I don't know if it's because of uh, Google Plus is causing it or what it is I just want y'all to know that for those that have replied and don't never see a response it's not because I don't want to it's because for some reason it's not letting me so uh, don't feel discouraged if you see that anyway uh, hope you enjoyed the little tech tip and uh, We'll catch you next time.